and gentlemen, we're, welcome to the April 25th, 2018 Select Board meeting. I'll call this meeting to order at this time. Um, consent and agenda. And we have minutes, 2000, um, March 28th, 2018. Um, the warrants we have that are being signed now, which are the water. Water Department, Water and Sewer, um, signed a flat grant MOA agreement with Mountain Ridge Road and uh, PVPC, uh, CPC agreement amendment number two. I have one question just on that Sir. flat grant. I don't know if now's the time or later. Uh, sure. Was, was that something that was brought before the board previously and you guys discussed? Mm -hmm. And is that 45000 from the town in the budget for this year? Yeah, it was the Chapter 90. Yeah, I think we can use Chapter 90, not utilize Chapter 90. Okay, okay. so it's already yeah. planned and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> well, this is the only way to start get the planning of the project going. I'm not sure it's going to land yet um, on our behalf. We're going to do some of the work, possibly the culvert work. Uh, as part of the match, so okay. we don't have to dig into the. Oh, so it might be some working kind instead of financial. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Match. It's a twenty percent match, so I can supply labor and materials or chapter ninety, however it works out. Okay. Just like for my time and your time. Okay. I think it's been two years now we applied for this, and it's finally just getting. Okay. I think this was the fourth yeah. year. The fourth year? We applied, yeah. I think it was. Mike Lomoski brought it. Yeah. yeah. yeah I applied last year at this time. Oh, yeah. so we applied yeah. to the Lloyd Warriors first round and we didn't get it. We applied the second round and then we got it for $220,000 for paving a portion of Moody Bridge Road and the area of the wildlife sanctuary. Not paving. That was a big discussion. Chip seal. Chip seal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Comes to, yeah, comes in 227 with our match. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a big discussion four years ago, uh, paving or chip seal. Yeah. And, and just so you know, we may have an opportunity to do the existing paving ends for future grants. Uh, I've already been talking with the, the Federal Highway Administration on that. So. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll go to public comments. Is there anybody here this evening for public comments? Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Jessica Kem, uh, 35 West Street. Um, I just wanted to speak about the, um, the police department's Facebook post over the weekend. Um, as many of you, as you as many of you know, and as the Gazette reported yesterday, um, there was a post over the weekend um, on the Hadley Police uh, Department page, uh, which expressed an idea which is based in racism that caring about racial bias means not caring about police lives. The post was removed quickly, and Chief Mason apologized for the error. It was intended for a personal page and not the police department page. I'm concerned that a member of the police uh, is sharing racist memes online. I'm concerned that members of our community may live in danger due to the effect that implicit bias can have in policing. To his credit as a leader, Chief Mason has offered to hold a dialogue with concerned citizens, such as myself, and at that meeting I'll bring up these concerns and others. I also urge the select board to continue this conversation. Um, I wonder if our recently expanded police department needs more funding for training. Um, I understand from the newspaper article that there's annual bias training, and if that is a one-day bias training, that's insufficient. I've had concerns for a long time about the purpose of the Hadley Police Department Facebook page. There are times when it is uh, informational about community events. Um, but there's also times when car accident photographs are posted, it seems to me like public shaming, 
And there's an open comment thread that's not moderated. And I'm not sure that that serves a productive um, purpose for our community. Um, I feel that what happened this weekend crossed an obvious line, and I hope that the select board takes it seriously um, and continues to um, have conversations with the police department about this. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Jessica. Um, my only comment is, is that, of course, we're not allowed to discuss any personnel matters in open okay. session without uh, anything being here. So we uh, duly take note of what you've said. Uh, again, that meeting is open uh, to anyone that has any issues or would like to speak to it. Um, I think we're meeting on Monday at 515 at That's the right. public safety complex. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody that would like to come is more than invited. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Further comments? Uh, John? Yeah, <clears throat> I want to bring to the board's attention two things. One, I received the minutes from the municipal uh, senior center committee. In those minutes, they put all the highlights in it. No motions, no seconds, no opening, no closing. I feel they're, they're in violation of the open meeting law. What transpired there is illegal. There was no votes taken. So I know I got previous minutes, the opening, the closing, the motion, the vote, no, and there's no attendance there. So it's just a guessing game. I think you need to send them a message to redo their minutes in detail because they are public records. They want to be transparent, but they don't want to say who voted for anything or who voted against anything. All right, that's one thing. And secondly, I received an email that was sent from Sogman Stanley, and that's what it said. I just wanted to drop you a quick note because I've heard that Don Nichkowski probably spelled wrong, purchased tickets to the COA wine uh, taste and event tonight. I have also heard that he has been visiting the senior center frequently to talk to Suzanne, and it is bordered harassment if not crossed that line. I will be attending that event that evening, at, and well, uh, I, don't think and that, I don't hope and everything goes smoothly. John, we can't get into If that. there is any John, issues, I John, will ask him to leave. We cannot have detrimental things saying you can't bring somebody else's name into an email of what But he can do that to me. He violate my civil rights, that's fine for a selectman. He's not violating Well what did you rights. do with Donald Pitt when he flashed his badge? You you, you broadcasted it everywhere. He did not flash a badge. He had no authority doing that. He was just making the Yeah he was there. just did you acquaint him as the truant officer of the town? He, no. He's a select he's, board member. I'm going to file this as a complaint with the State Ethics Commission. That's enough. No. That's it, enough. It's not enough. It is enough. Because you can't have that kind of behavior. Do what you need to do. You said that this yourself. Is, this is not the venue Yeah. to do that at. Right. Only when you, you want to hear. you have a problem, do what you need to do. I had a problem. And this is where you have your open meeting. But I, like I said before, Talking to you about it's something is comment. useless. It's a public comment. I made a public comment. You don't want to hear it. So we'll duly note it. All right. Ambulance service will do the town administrative report later. Sure. Okay. Ambulance service. Thank you for coming. I have my committee here this evening. Thank you. We're technically a work group. Work group. We are I know. Technically a work group. That's okay. Uh, not a formal committee signed by the board. Good evening. I'm Barbara O'Connor, resident obviously of Town of Hadley. Um, I know there's some new members of the board that I have uh, not met, but it's nice to, to see you here. Thank you for serving. Um, with me tonight are also some members of the of the work group, and uh, uh, Hank Barstow, Amy uh, Biden, and George Moyarty. Um, uh, Chief Spankney was not here tonight. He was also on the work group. Steve Barstow was on the work group. Uh, and uh, two members of the select board, um, Joyce and uh, Molly, were also on um, Our deputy chief is uh, representing, representing uh, Mike tonight. So I want to first off say we had a great work group. I think people worked very well together, very respectful. 
Uh, we've been meeting for over a year. Uh, we listened to a lot of information uh, and covered, I think, a lot of ground in that, that time period. Uh, we began our work with the purpose of um, crafting an RFP and sending out an RFP for uh, ambulance service for the town of Hadley. Uh, we did that. We issued an RFP. As you know, the RFP came back with one responded. Um, we reviewed that work. We actually met with that company. That company is Action EMS. They did a, uh, submitted a very comprehensive proposal and then presented a very comprehensive uh, proposal. Although having only one proposal, we stepped back a little bit. Uh, we had some additional meetings with the town of Amherst. Um, and I should, I should say, and I've said this in my letter to you all, we also met prior to crafting the RFP. Uh, with many municipalities and some private vendors too about um, you know different services and different models of services um, and so we covered all that ground um, uh, and then spent the latter part of our meetings really discussing what's in the best interest of having in terms of the actual service um, in our last meeting we voted uh, although my letter says unanimously, I realized that Steve Barstow was not at that meeting. So with the exception of Steve Barstow, everybody present, it was a unanimous vote to move forward with recommending to you uh, action ambulance. Um, we made that decision obviously not lightly. Um, we felt very passionately about the level of service that we have gotten from Amherst. They are um, incredibly professional and have done a tremendous job for the town of, uh, town of Hadley for a number of years. That said, the group could not help but be concerned about what uh, we've seen in the newspaper about the stress on Amherst. Um, and frankly, um, uh, I think it's fair to say we felt very passionately that the town of Hadley residents deserve the best possible response times, the best possible service. Um, and with Amherst constraints right now, uh, we really felt that action presents us with a better option. It gives us a uh, full-time ambulance in the town 24-7, 365, uh, housed in the um, uh, Hadley Fire Station. And they are very committed to being involved in our community, very committed to actually helping Hadley if Hadley so chooses to transition uh, eventually to its own service. We were extremely impressed with uh, the company in their presentation. So I want to pause there and look to my fellow committee members, I mean, sorry, work group members to see if I missed anything, if any, anybody wants to add anything that <coughs> they have left out. George, George, George is itching there. No, I just don't know. I mean, <laughs> we can see you. <coughs> I'm, not, I'm not itching. I just uh, didn't know if I should bring it up now. I think <coughs> Action uh, EMS absolutely um, our RFP was very detailed. Um, in some aspects, I think almost too detailed. They, they truly, I, I think everything we asked for, they agreed to. I, I really don't think they didn't agree to anything. If it was, it was very small and minor. Um, the, the other thing, I mean, I'm a taxpayer as well, and it's a lot more money than what we were paying. It's it's a lot more money than what Amherst said they would do for this this year and next year. Um, in, in a two year contract, you know, it's one hundred five thousand or one hundred four thousand dollars more. Um, I think that uh, if the town is going to seriously start bridging that they want to start their own EMS, um, I personally think that it's probably not the best thing to do. I think there's too many uh, unknown cost. Uh, the committee did not look at any budget submitted by the fire chief or the town regarding what an ambulance service would cost. Um, but by saying that, I also want to say that the the best, if, if the town is going to really within a f two years to say we're going to get into the ambulance service, really our only way of, of starting that program because I, there's really no Nobody is, that works for the town of Hadley has ever started an ambulance service from scratch. I'm not sure about if you were involved in one. Um, with, with saying that, there's a lot of pitfalls with everything. I think there's a lot of costs. You know, you're going to need nine full-time EMTs. Um, 
there's there's benefits everything so we looked at no cost at that um, so if the town is seriously going to go into the EMS business um, action EMS by far is is going to help the fire department bridge that they've said that they were they will work with us uh, if, if the town decides in a year or two years they get their ambulance they start running maybe the second call if, you know the first call would be them uh, so that the town gets the experience able to get the licenses that they need um, spending that hundred and five thousand dollars is money well spent in, in my part if the town doesn't think that they're going to be spending you know upwards of probably a couple hundred to five hundred thousand dollars in, in startup costs <coughs> ambulances all that stuff then I think we should be looking at Amherst that's that's my opinion um, some of the the uh, some of the stuff that Amherst did give us uh, you know delays time delays and response times um, there are some absolutely and I, I just think that uh, some of them weren't explained well some of them they said well it's weather well we, we never checked whether it was weather or not some of them the police because of security reasons hold them there well all we get is it was a 15 minute uh, response time and it, you know we wouldn't think that it was that um, so we didn't really get into their numbers Yes, they're overworked. Um, they don't always have an ambulance for us, but I think it, it comes down to if the town is, is seriously going to get into EMS services relatively quick, a year or two, um, then an action is, is probably the only way we should look at it. If we're not, then I think the select board should, should look at what, you know, the other options. Some sort of long-term contract with the service. Somebody, yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, the, the two big issues I had throughout this whole thing was the cost of implementing this, which the chief had came up with 1.6 million to start, and a level of service, a paramedic or an ALS uh, ambulance. And those are two big issues that we have had right now. Yeah, I mean, we, we kicked those questions around too, and our scope was not to develop a budget or review a budget or prepare for the town to have its own fire department. Um, it was part of the discussion, quite frankly, because the philosophy and the decision of the board, you know, that they, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, action Ambulance is in a number of municipalities who have no interest in having uh, their own fire department run their service. And, you know, the closest one is the city of Hoyoke, and, um, you know, by all accounts and references, um, the service there is held in high regard. Uh, the rest of them, I think, are on the, in the East Coast part of the state. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. When I was on the board 10 years ago, I was on the uh, ambulance group at that time, and change takes time, but I remember being very concerned as a select board member um, very much about the fire department, the level of service, and ultimately the safety of our residents because of that. And we've done, the town has changed tremendously in that 10 years in terms of the growth in, in the fire department and the, uh, the police department as well. Um, and George is right, it's not, you know, we don't recommend this decision lightly because it is more cost, right? And everybody <coughs> sitting here is a taxpayer in the town of Amherst. You know, as someone who's retired and on a fixed income, you know, my taxes going up is not something I want to see happen. But at the end of the day, um, the money is, I think, going to be well spent and a significantly reduced uh, response time. I've got a couple of questions for the work group and the deputy chief. So, action, uh, will it always, always be ALS staffs with paramedics and will it be all paramedics on board or are they going to have one paramedic in the basics? I, yeah, I have to look at the, do you remember, Joyce? I believe it's going to be two paramedics. Yeah. And then, um, I guess the other question for the chief is, um, if we're going to be housing their ambulance at the public safety complex, we've heard over the years at various times that we're running out of room at the public safety complex to store equipment. We don't have room to put the equipment that we have now. So where are we coming up with the space to house an ambulance that we don't even own versus so, equipment that we do own? So right now we do have a spot if there is an, 
the ambulance, if you guys do go out in action, there is a spot at the center station right now. Um, and uh, furthermore, is that I know that they said they're going to have an ambulance with possibly with two paramedics and then have a backup ambulance with a paramedic and possibly a basic on the second ambulance. But that was the second ambulance, not the first ambulance. But there is a spot at the center station right now for an ambulance. And they were only in the house one ambulance at this time. And they did reduce their price to reflect that. Right. And can, I just, can I just say one quick thing about, um, so I come from an EMS, I work for AMR, I work for South Hadley Fire on the ambulance, stuff like that. Um, and uh, what happened with Action over in Hoyoke is that AMR didn't want the contract anymore. So Action came over, they took it. And what happened with Action is that they took on such a big, large scale, and AMR was so happy to get rid of Hoyoke because of how many calls they do, the hospital, all this other stuff. So they went in not knowing for a bigger city. But if you hear about action out east, it's nothing but great things. And also now that you talk to Hoyoke that, you know, Hoyoke Fire and stuff like that that I've talked to in the past couple of weeks, is that everything's changed with Action EMS and everything's been really going really smooth and well with the city of Hoyoke. Got just a couple more. That's it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so Action does medical transport as well. Uh, which typically is a more lucrative line of work than actually doing mm -hmm. um, EMS calls. So is there any assurances that we will have those two ambulances dedicated to the town rather than having to fight for ambulance availability with transports and, and other things that a, a private company would typically be going after? Yeah, so a point of clarification, it's one ambulance station in the town 24-7-365, and I think they will have a backup available as, you know, we have ebbs and flows, peaks and valleys, you know, they recognize that. So it's not two ambulance stations. And the transport is down here. Right, okay. right. So just to be clear, when, when we point down here, we're talking about the corner, you know, of um, 47 and right. Um, and we still have mutual aid also. Correct, yeah. And that doesn't go away mutually. <laughs> right. But that was my, right. my next question, actually. I think ways. one thing that is important is we did an RFP, but that's not a contract. Right. So stuff that, you know, this, this committee looked at and said that's great. Right. In the past years, we've made recommendations and, you know, maybe the first contract, it, it, it makes it in there and then it disappears the second. That's where, where it's going to be important that when you guys, as, as the select board, make the decision, right. and it really doesn't matter who you do, the contract needs to spell out some very important things. Um, and so that we're, we're going to hold these these contractors, and that's what they are, a contractor. Um, some of the stuff, I'll just bring it up. I mean, you brought up, you know, a guaranteed ambulance. Yes, that, that I think in our RFP it was one ambulance. They suggested that if, if it got busy, they could maybe shift something this way, but nothing is guaranteed for the <coughs> second. Um, but they did, they did we, in our RFP, if, if something's going on in Hadley, you know, maybe it's the Memorial Day Parade, they would, they would, bring an ambulance to stand by. They, they made that commitment where we didn't get that commitment from it from Amherst. Right. Um, so some of that stuff will make up the difference, um, you know, if you're looking at strictly money. But it, it's really important that the select board, um, you know, runs it, you know, whether they run it back through our committee, and, and because there's a lot of things that we've looked at over the 10 years that we've been on this committee that is important. Some of the stuff is just simple, uh, daily run logs, you know, time in, time out. We, we've, we've, over the years, have a very hard time getting that information. They promised us in their, in the meeting we had that, you know, that, that's, that's nothing for them. They do that everywhere. Right. Um, and that's information that the select board or, or the committee can look at and say, hey, we got to make changes in the next contract. It's hard for us to get that information now. So. I, I think some people were concerned um, with a non-fire department service running here in town is that they can come in and they make it look good on paper but we have to hold them to their um, hold them to the fire more or less uh, and how we want them to represent our town when they go out on these ambulance calls and I think like George says it boils down to the contract have we seen a draft contract or anything or do we have no we just have the RFP right now but it is up to us to draw up that contract and send it to the lawyer, make sure we have everything in there that we want. 
Um, it was a hard decision. We've had Amherst Ambulance since 1947, and that's a long time for Amherst to be serving our community. They've served our community well. Uh, we have no doubt about that. Uh, I know firsthand um, from working with these guys that they are outstretched to the hilt uh, over there. They're, um, but they still put out top-notch care. Um, so, I mean, that was a big transition for me. I would think I was the last holdout <coughs> hold <out> vote <laughs> because I know what they do, but I also understand what they're having to face over there in, in their staffing, in their having to um, do their runs and things like that, that it sometimes is um, overpowering for them where they've had to call in backup from mutual aid themselves. Well, because their funding's going in the general. And they have six ambulances, so I mean, you know, for them to have to call right. backup to staff and to, to take care of everything is uh, um, one of the things that we did take a look at. I don't at. think any time during the day there's at least three of them going down Route 9 back or forth. Yeah, I so. would go to work and there'd be six of them sitting over there in the bay, so. But let me just uh, add, let me just add one thing, and, and that was, the, the one thing I really liked about Action, aside from their very, very professional presentation and, and the fact that all their executives came, the financial people and everything were there, and they were extremely open with us. But what it does is it allows us to have a top-notch ambulance service with the service that we need located right here in Hadley. Some training to our fire, fire department, but in the time that they're going to be here, it allows our fire department to get on its feet as a fire department and that leadership going in those directions and stuff rather than throwing something in right away and having it go from here to here. So I, I was, you know, that, that was a, a big plus for me was to have the professional ambulance right here in this town, the medical part of this, and, and a part of it close by, but not part of it. They dispatched their own ambulances and stuff like that. So we're not getting into dispatch, we're not adding more personnel to have that ambulance here, which again is that one-time cost. Well, if you look at the difference with what Amherst and what Action's going to charge, I think the difference is 67000 correct? Mm -hmm. So for $67,000 you're going to get a paramedic level service in the town, dedicated to the town, 24-7, and because we're completely, or, or because we are somewhat uncertain as to what the calls are in the town, because we haven't controlled that data since 1940, whatever Joe said. 47. <laughs> 47. <laughs> um, they, Action Ambulance has also said, and the details will have to be flushed out in the contract, that some of that, if there are more revenues than they anticipated, that cost would actually be reduced. Well, that was my next contract. Uh, question about the rebates that you mentioned. So what are they proposing? I mean, uh, we don't have a contract, so this, 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 this could be something just thrown out there as a, oh yeah, we'll give you back some money. So we don't have yeah, really, calls. Yeah, we don't right. have anything. Right, and I think those can be ironed out in the, in the actual contract. Mm -hmm. right. I guess. And the, the um, you know, I think the, the intent tonight was obviously the, you know, we've been working on this a long time, so the, the intent was to bring this before the, the full board um, specifically for the purpose of saying yay or nay on moving forward with action, but then we know that there's, to, to your point, the devil's in the details of the contract. So the next logical step would be um, working with David, obviously, to get a contract drafted. We'll be able to get existing contracts with other um, municipalities that work with action to see what's in there. Obviously, we'll do our due diligence that way. Bring it back to the work group, since we're the ones who um, spent all the time going through the RFP and getting the details, and then that contract would then come back to the board. So how long is Amherst's um, bid good for? When, when does that expire? So we'll, uh, basically, it, if it's we, not a bid. This is the thing. They, um, Amherst did not reply to the RFP. So the only involvement we had with Amherst was um, you know, a conversation around the table. David did, um, in preparation for the meeting, ask the town manager to put the 200 and, or excuse me, 200 the year, 245 the second year. In, in writing, okay. um, but there's there's no guarantee on those numbers. And what everybody should understand too, because I um, had the misfortune of bothering to look at 
some comments that were out on, on Mass Live or the Gazette, or I don't know what. Um, but I was curious to see if anybody made comments about the news articles that ran on it. It almost been Mass Live. Um, there was one posting, and unless I missed part of it, whoever made the post didn't understand. It sounded like action was significantly more expensive than Amherst. Um, and they weren't taking into account the fact that when Amherst came to the table, they started at 490,000. So in Amherst's mind, they truly believe, and we will argue this all day long, but they truly believe that the town of Hadley is costing them 490,000. And they said that they recognize that they can't kind of get from the 140,000 starting point up to that 490. But they made it clear that's the direction that they're going in. Um, because they feel, and understandably so, if that's, if that's how they're looking at it, they feel that they're accountable to their own taxpayers in Amherst and feel that any <coughs> other municipalities should be paying their fair share. We will argue that fair share point all day long, but the 200 245 was a significant concession. So, you know, in, in my mind, um, I think it's, um, you know, not even a question that we'd be looking at significant additional increases as we moved along here with Amherst. You could make the argument that once action comes in with their two plus one contract, they could do the same thing. But again, their, but their business model hasn't supported that either. Their exactly. business model has been relatively more like cost of living or, or right. CPI. Well, that's so all they do. They're not also a fire department. They're not also answering to a town administrator or right. a board of selectmen or anything else. That's apolitical. what they do. They're right. apolitical. They provide medical emergency service to an area. Yeah. I think that's what my only concern is that while we're working out the contract details, uh, we have what until July is when the current contract <coughs> expires. Mm -hmm. So if we don't get this ironed out in a manner that's acceptable to the to the select board mm -hmm. to the town residents uh, you know we could be in a, in a bad place come july mm -hmm. with, with having no service or being forced to pay whatever amherst demands so right. it's it's well our, our intent is to get this <laughs> done quickly yeah. right yeah i just, i would just like to say something um just to back up what joyce said um so when you have an ambulance service anywhere who no matter what you have is that you have a zoning plan. So you've probably heard, you were at EMT before, so you have a zoning plan. So action has to have a zoning plan, and that's considered the mutual aid policy with Northampton, Amherst, South Hadley, South Deerfield. It's so all the surrounding, whatever, it all depends on a radius and everything like that. And furthermore is if we do go, if the town does go with action, uh, the EMT basics right now in Hadley can actually work off of their licenses to carry um, Narcan and epinephrine. Right now we cannot. I'm um, trying to go forward with that with an e um, emergency first responding with Cooley Dickinson Hospital and uh, OEMS um, through Northampton. Um, but it, that's that's even a lot of work for me to even just to get that. That's almost a six months period just if, say if we do stay with Amherst, for us to carry that stuff, it's going to be six months before we even carry any of that stuff. Um, so if we did have action, we can go underneath their license um, and work off of that also. And so this is all inclusive. We don't, we're working off of their medical direction, we're working off of their, of their licenses, everything. The town does not have to pay for anything additional. Right. Okay. It would be for us to work off, so for us for EMTs to give aspirin, <coughs> right. to give epinephrine for an allergic reaction, right. to give Narcan. Um, you know, the police have Narcan, they can push it because that's on you know, a different story, right. subject. You know, me as an empty basic, I can't carry it in the town of Hadley. Right. So um, that's what we're trying to go for too. Um, and also glucose, you know, we, we can't carry that. So we can work underneath them. It's like a part B, I'm pretty sure, of their license. But that's something that is within two years, and I think that that was the driven factor um, in wanting to make sure that we went ahead to at least get a basic ambulance up and running. And you have to have a basic ambulance up and running before you can even go to an ALS. So there's steps that you have to take before you can advance to anything uh, further than that. Right. I, I was just gonna say, yeah, I think that this is like a good interim solution, but I just feel like when we're looking at the long term, how do we plan accordingly? Because I think that had we 
the, the, the drawback is we don't have any uh, scale to really get the cost effectiveness for an ambulance service. So, you know, in the future, is there, if we're talking about investing a lot of money into an ambulance and different services, you know, having a regional approach seems like it could be more cost effective <coughs> in the long term. Maybe this business somehow is more cost effective. I don't know all the numbers, but that's my only concern is don't want to pigeonhole us down a path where we're committed to this company and then we try to go back to Amherst and all of a sudden the price is double what this is or something along those lines where we get pigeonholed. But there are some other options. I mean, there is South County, yep. yeah. uh, which isn't that far from us either that is you know, taking care of Sunderland in that area. <coughs> there. Um, so there are other options for us to look at, again, yeah. to get us to where we want to be in two years. This seemed to be like the best option for us. Well, and I think we had a unique RFP too, because the RFP uh, was crafted in such a way to help build, help have you build a program. If for some reason the select board decided that wasn't the way they wanted to go, a different RFP is going to attract, I think, more <coughs> vendors to the table than this particular RFP did. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, and can I um, oh, just on the numbers? Just uh, so I just want a slightly different different spin on it. Um, I will freely admit that it's not a foregone conclusion to me that we're going to have an in-house BLS in two years. I'm, from the standpoint, I want to leverage off of what Hank said, um, this is giving us an opportunity to develop a, the fire department that we're just building out now to assess the skill sets, the management, all of that. Um, logic says to me that from, from what the chief has said and what we've heard from other people, that it would make financial sense for us to go in that direction. But you know, that may be two years down the road, it may be four years down the road. We're also getting really good data for the first time. So, and I don't, I'm not sure where that 1.6 million came from, John. I don't, I don't ever remember hearing that number about Mike it. Mike presumed it had a Yeah, no, I, And that was a start. So. But, um, but I, it's, it allows us the time to do exactly the analysis that Christian's talking about. I mean, we have not sat down and really fully crunched out those numbers because, quite frankly, Chief Spanknable hasn't had the help that he's got right now. So he's got Evan's expertise on board, um, new hires coming on. We'll have the time, and what we talked about in, in the uh, committee was not waiting until the end of the action EMS contract in its third year to say, oh, maybe we should start looking at uh, what a BLS might look like and how to ramp up to it. That we're committed, if, if the select board will allow, to really just continuing to push forward here, and maybe not with the current composition of the committee, but having some sort of public safety work group that's focused on holding all of our feet to the fire to make sure that that analysis continues, that we collect the proper data, that the chief and whoever he needs to start building out what those financial scenarios might look like actually happens. And it happens, to David's point, not at the 11th hour when somebody could pull the rug out from under us, but <coughs> it's really setting ourselves up for making a sound decision two years down the road from now. I don't feel like we have that information, quite frankly, from Amherst. Um, and again, it's just the nature of the reporting that they have. As Hank said, you know, they're not running it like a commercial enterprise. These folks will be. So that's really important to me. Um, what's most important to me is underscoring the response times and the quality of care. <coughs> Under no set of circumstances should the select board ever put the town in a position where we run the risk of taking a step backwards. Um, and I. Certainly, if there's anything I had heard that would lead me down that path, I would not at all be suggesting a change. But um, we think we're doing right by the residents and the, and the folks that go through this town every day to have that ambulance nearby. So my question is, as far as our, our vote tonight, is there a way that we can, I mean, I, at this point, without seeing the contract and, and seeing the details, um, I just, I don't think I can support saying yes. We're going with action tonight, and you know, pushing Amherst off. Um, I guess are we voting just to make, take the next step forward to start drafting that contract, or are we making the final determination tonight that yes, we are choosing action regardless? Well, I think we're choosing action subject to a favorable um, 
contract negotiation, right? I mean, that, that's typically how this, this would work. And to be honest with you, we don't have any, I mean, the contract we have from Amherst is a couple of pages. I mean, the, there's no, right. no, no meat to it right either. now. You know, there's one thing regarding the contract. If, if you read the RFP, it's pretty detailed. Right. Um, it, it, it truly is. Some of the stuff probably won't make it into the contract because we did a lot of, you know, scenario A, scenario B, scenario C. So a lot of that can be cleaned out. It, it, it really is. is it, it won't take the committee long to, if you if somebody gets something in a doc, you know, in documentation that, that would resemble the contract you need, it, a lot of the background is already done. You know, it's it's really, and maybe I'm wrong, is we can go through relatively quick, making sure everything's there, and then somebody has to do the legal side and, and the stuff that has to be done for the town side, but the actual contract, a lot of that is was in the RFP. Uh, regarding if somebody goes and changes their, their mind, I mean, they have to be spoken to, but rel I mean, I, I would think that would be relatively quick. I think our RFP was 30 pages. Um, by no means is that the contract, but I mean, all, all the ideas were, were put into it. You know, there might be some changes. Um, I mean, some of the stuff I think that the select board needs to look at too, is you, you're gonna be having non-town employees access to the whole fire station. You know, some, some, some kind of guidelines have to be drawn up, whether it's the police department, fire department, whoever does that, some of that stuff has to happen. Um, you know, how, how they interact there, uh, but that's stuff that, should happen before they, they move in. But I think the contract itself, I don't see where there's a lot of movement on, on what they've already agreed to. Like any RFP, they'll promise you the world you right. know, when it comes down to contract time. So, you know, one thing that I think the residents would need to see and me would be financial penalties for not meeting their response times or not meeting their promises in the contract because a couple page contract like we have with Amherst isn't gonna cut it with a private company. We did speak to that uh, at different, I don't think that made it into the RFP, but we, we spoke to that too. I just, um, listening to both Action and to Amherst, this is just my opinion. Um, when Action came, they were very professional. We just talked about that. With, with Amherst, when they did come, I found out about that we did have quite the contract where they promised us numbers, where they promised us uh, housing, you know, that they were gonna have someone here. And, and they never followed through with any of that. When we brought up concerns that, that the um, people down in Hockenham, down in towards South Hadley, were gonna be many, many times, it's past 10 minutes wait time. That 10 minute wait time or longer that, that was just unacceptable, I didn't, no matter what the cost was. So we, uh, we asked, how about regionalize? <coughs> how about moving just one ambulance here? How about, um, what would, if, if South Hadley could pick it up? Nothing, nothing would work, they had no options. So they, it, at that point, in my mind, when they couldn't come up with anything, I felt like we needed to have someone, no matter what the cost was, that we needed to have an ambulance that was in Hadley because they, they couldn't come up with anything that I felt that could get the people in, in South Hat, towards South Hadley and I'm talking about, covered. I just didn't feel strong enough about that. And periodically throughout the years, South Hadley has came over to Hadley and Sunderland has come into Hadley mm -hmm. just because of the response. They, the, the, quite, when we mentioned South Hadley, maybe they could cover, they said, well, there be a, the ALS is too far away. That, that the only one they could cover would be BLS. And, and so District 2. District 2, yes. Mm -hmm. yep, District 1 would be about almost 25 to 30 minutes out. When we actually came one time to Lane Manor, it took us about 30 minutes, and the radio communication was, 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 was awful. Um, we know to go to Hadley, we know to go to Amherst, no one told us anything. They told us the address, and it was for such and such, and we tried signing on different frequencies, and no one was answering us, so we didn't even know until we got there. It was actually a really ill person, and my partner was a paramedic, and he was very upset because of we didn't get the correct information on that patient. Sounds like so bad to use some radios. <laughs> <laughs> they also actually had some amazing amazing technology as well they talked to us about they had, they had technology where they could um if 
like groups of seniors wanted to put uh, put into this where they could uh, have a database where it would say, oh, we're going to this house. It would come up, oh, you have COPD and you have, uh, you have heart problems. It would come up on their way there so they would know what they're getting themselves into. They had some amazing technology. That or they, they have a dog or go to the back door because the front door has been blocked for years with, you know, all of that. Type. It's all with the new CAD system that's going out there for yeah. the... Amherst may have that too, we just don't know. We, yeah, <laughs> I think there's a process. process. <laughs> yeah, a process. And hundreds of towns have already switched to privatized ambulances. So a lot of this stuff, the, the, the learning curve has been done by a lot of people. Yeah. So I think, I think we're actually you know, in a other, good place for it. Like I said, the other, the other big issue, and I'm sure you looked at it, was when Sunderland had their own, Wheatley had their own, and mm -hmm. South Deerfield had their own. I mean, they regionalized for a reason. It had to be financially. I did yeah. speak to a bunch of people. And they didn't have the calls to support their yeah. own individuals. They're doing a, they're doing a, we talked to those um, South County, yeah. and they, they're doing a thousand calls. We're doing a thousand calls alone, just about in Hadley alone. Yeah. And that's not counting the Mullen Center. That's Correct. not counting the football stadium. Mm -hmm. So we should be getting should be Right. Getting. Yeah. Have you guys applied for any kind of grant for an ambulance? We haven't. We haven't. We, the reason I, I asked that, I was at a workshop with the Planning Board, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, cities and towns under, under the populations of uh, 7,000, this lady from, there's all kinds of different places <coughs> to look for grants. And she, on her screen, she showed a full-blown ambulance all in there that towns could apply for that. Mm -hmm. And I did talk to the fire chief, and I'm gonna. I got a call into Boston, about that, <coughs> and so I'm gonna relate it to the fire chief for, okay. for him to look into it. Mm -hmm. and, Thank you. And, and also to um, Turner's Falls up in Franklin County, they actually just started their uh, BLS ambulance. Um, I have a couple friends that are captains up there, and uh, Medcare takes care of the first call. They take care of the second call. And Medcare backs them up with ALS if an, it's an ALS call. Uh, Greenfield actually just also went that way too. Medcare still covers them, but they just got a BLS ambulance, so they're heading that direction too. So that's a diff So I talked to Chief Spanknable about that, and we are going to reach out to those departments to see what steps they took to try and make things go a lot smooth if we go this route. Once the once the RFP's all set, is it worth going out to bid again to see if there's? We had thought about that, but because of the, and we had talked to the some other ambulance services, um, and because of the way the RFP is and what we were looking for, they had no interest in um, doing that. We did talk to Pioneer, um, which is the other uh, private ambulance in the area, uh, which has a very good reputation, but they had uh, no interest because they were saying that the amount of calls that we had were not enough to sustain them alone. That's what they had told us. So, call for a vote. <coughs> vote on. Can we just define <laughs> it for David's question? <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I guess I wouldn't mind motioning to move forward with drafting a contract or take oh, sorry, and I wouldn't mind allocating the funds and making the funds available so we can figure this out for town meeting. Mm -hmm. What I don't want to do is say, yes, we are going to action EMS until we've seen drafted a contract and seen a contract. It's, it's not legal binding until you have a contract. Right. Right. <coughs> and am I misspeaking? Won't that contract come back to the select board? Yes, it will. And um, I was searching through my databases here because I'm, you know, we, we put together this RFP back in August, and so I'm having a hard time remembering components. But I, it's a stint matter, of course, I always append a standard contract. Uh, there was a lot of legal language so that... So it was there, so we have we have the basis for a contract. Yeah, I don't remember a specific contract. <coughs> but I'd have to go back. It's been a while since it's been a while since <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't want to give the townspeople the impression that we're just making this leap without having everything finalized. And of I course. just want everybody to understand that we're not just making this jump and that we get it in writing. And well, I think yeah. what, like you're Absolutely. saying is they come in with one face, but they have a right. different face. Right. And, and I, I think, think what you're doing is accepting the recommendation of our study group mm -hmm. back to the board mm -hmm. that 
you know, we're saying based on everything that we looked at, that action ambulance would be what we would say. Now, we didn't have negotiating authority, so we couldn't negotiate with anybody. So now the next phase of this is negotiating with, with action and, and possibly even Amherst. As far as I know, there's nothing in writing from Amherst yet, right? Correct. It's all just verbal that's communication. And it's changed that's three times. That's good. At that. this point, so, financially, it may be worth go, going out to bid again for the service. You know, you may have Northam and Amherst bid on it. Then what are we going to do July 1, Jim? Yeah, I don't think you have the time. We don't have the time. I, I think we they had an opportunity as an Amherst yeah. to look at the RFP and make us some proposal in writing and they didn't and there was enough things in there the ambulance didn't have to be put at our station all it was is they had to tell us where it was and we'd make a decision whether it was too far or not um, so there's a lot of things there that were open to anybody to bid on it some uh, it was you know 911 911 we right now we just ship all ambulance calls to Amherst so some some ambulance services didn't want to get involved. So, but Action said no problem. We have a 911 operator that I don't quote me on this. I think it's in Hoyo that those calls would go to. They would dispatch out all EMSs. So if somebody needed, you know, to be taught CPR over the phone, they would be doing all that. So they would be triaging, and the ambulance would get going. Amherst had the opportunity to do all that, and they didn't. And when they did come to us, they, they answered most of our questions. They did come with a bunch of paperwork that we've been asking for for three years. They showed up that night with them. Um, but they weren't, they really didn't look at anything other than nothing changes. If we have some big event in Hadley, you're not going to get an ambulance there to stand by. You're not. So they, they didn't even look at the R, or they looked at the RFP, but they really didn't want to. The RFP had plenty of places for you to put your comments in, or this is what we're going to bid, and and they didn't. Um, you know, maybe if they think they're going to lose it, they'll change their mind. But you know, at some point we have to move on this. July first is coming quick, and and I think even at uh, breakneck speed to get a contract ready for that, you know, some some type of decision. Whether we do it like Molly said, it's it's. Well, You're voting for action pending a, a, a you know, a contract, think, which you guys would have to sign anyway. Yeah, I think it's important to note that the, their lead time was less than 30 days. They said they could. They'd find something. To, right, yeah. but yeah. I think their preference was 30 days. Yeah. yeah. So um, I will make a motion that the select board accepts the recommendation of the ambulance work group. Um, to move forward with contract negotiations with Action EMS, subject to final approval of the select. I'll second that. Any further discussion? <coughs> can, can we uh, just modify that motion to, I guess, if we need to, to allocate the funds so that way it's available? Or do we need to do that separately? Or we'll be doing that. I think yeah, I think that might be part of part and parcel of what we're talking about. Cause, you know, I did put together a funding strategy for both scenarios going to the town of Amherst and going to the uh, uh, actually EMS. Uh, it's sent it around. It's in your board docs. Uh, I don't know if anybody had a difficulty uh, with the, the approach that I'm suggesting here. Finance committee, did you guys? I, I, I reviewed it. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going along with what David's approach was. That's what I was thinking before he even put it in. So I agree. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'd just like to thank. I would be up. Absolutely. Do you want to? I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're a good thanker. Sure. Yeah, you're a good no, thank, you. <laughs> thank you to the Ambulance Working Group for all your efforts this past year, but uh, certainly we'll want you to take a look at the contract uh, when it's up also. Yeah, if you're willing to take a look at the contract and we can call yeah. you together to do that, we'll yeah, absolutely. Be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very Provide much. Provide your service, man, Chair. <laughs> <laughs>
Good night. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good what? New windows. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. tomorrow. Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where are we going now? Let's see. How about the. I think you finished all the work on the uh, warrant and budget now. Okay, so do we, do we need to vote on that? Who we'll signed it? Who we'll signed the warrant? Who we'll signed it? Do we have do we have do we have some numbers to, to go into that blank spot there? Yeah. I would like to. If we have any, uh, well, the gambling one, but you know where the. Um, As far as the, the warrant or the, the budget? Warrant. The warrant? Yeah, in, in the budget, I mean. Um, yeah, the only one as far as uh, what we were looking to do tonight um, as the finance committee since we posted um, is we skipped over the the demand fees. Uh, Article 13. Article 13. I don't know, did you vote on that, Archie? No, you didn't. Yeah, you did. The select board voted for one. Yeah, 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 I think that from the last time we article five, five, we five to know. nothing. Eleven. Yeah, and yeah. we have thirteen. No, it's article eleven right now. Oh, sorry. It's okay. It changed. Yeah. I'm just getting right, right. Yeah. Which one? It changed. You're good. Eleven is the. Um, is the All right. How about sixteen? Page sixteen. Says six. Do we have that? Yeah, we're in both that. Yes. Oh, finance. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So, I got it. So, um, okay, so since you've already voted, if you don't mind, we'll see if there's, can we, uh, do we have a motion to? What was the, what was yours? Ours was four to one. Four to one. Uh -huh. In favor. Changing the fee from $15 from 15 to 30. To 30. Yeah. To 30. Yeah. We, we have a motion and then uh, second? Yeah, second. Second. Any discussion? No? So all in favor of Aye. that? Aye. Aye. So we'll do three. Three zero. Yeah, please. Okay. So we'll now Thank sit you. on the floor. The warrant's been posted already. Okay. Yeah. And so we're not, so I was uh, talking to David earlier on the petition articles. Mm -hmm. I've had people approaching me saying that it would be really helpful for them to know where the select board stands on the ones that are um, related to the, the senior center and the lot. Um, that said, I think that David said in the past we have not taken a position on petitioned articles. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Just, that is Ask correct. Me. Uh, yeah, so in the past you've, uh, you've allowed the democratic process to unfold. Mm -hmm. Oh, on uh, Article 14 and 15, there was a note to contact the Capital Committee. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So on the on 14, we were talking about possibility of borrowing, which I don't mm -hmm. recommend since we have $1.7 million. No, no, no benefit and it would be against our financial management policy to borrow 
in that situation. The other one was the North Hadley Congregational Church uh, and whether it was okay to give money to uh, a uh, religious organization from public uh, funds. And I talked to council and council said it depends. Depends on the purpose of the money, whether they're throwing in a match for themselves. If it's their, is it structured in such a way that we would be supporting a particular religious or a set of religious activities or not? So Andy Morris Freeman sent me the original application from the church. And I sent it on to council, and council will have a decision, an opinion on that uh, by the time we get to town meeting. Okay. And this is based upon the re recent SJC's case out of Acton. Okay. Okay. Anything else with the warrant? I think you're done. Okay. We have a, we have a, we have a budget. <coughs> uh, budget. So I guess it would be the, what we're lo looking at right now that David has. The um, just what to do with the, the new option two. Option two. Yeah. Would it be helpful if I just yeah. walk through it because there's a couple of different uh, ways so we can do this. Yeah. Is that is it the same one that's on the just the options to find out just okay. Everybody ready? All set? Mm -hmm. right. David go ahead. Okay. So uh, last week the Finance Committee made a recommendation for budget uh, pending the final decision on action in the EMS or the Town of Amherst Ambulance Service. Uh, at that time we needed to close a gap of $213,000 in change. We decided that we would uh, fund the school at $105,000 at the annual town meeting and defer till the special town meeting the remaining 53000 and change for the schools. So I've talked to Annie McKenzie about this. Um, we would use the House Ways and Means local aid adjustment. That's almost $90,000 of uh, boost that we got from the House Ways and Means. Thank you very much. And then going back into the local receipts, adjusting them north by $71,000. So that was the plan last week. This week we've now added 67500 further to be funded. So the balance is a negative 280816 It gives the schools 105, deferring to the special time meeting 53316 So that means that the shortfall is now 227500 We use the local aid. We use the local receipts, and then we do a uh, transfer of stabilization to OPEB of 67500 and then if that frees up 67500 of free cash to be applied to the budget to bring it into balance. So that is the plan. The targets that we're trying to achieve is <coughs> one. Um, can we maintain pace with our uh, free cash spending policy? That means that can we keep our free cash expenditures below $200,000 for recurring items within the budget? And we would be spending $197,500, which is on target, but really on target. <laughs> could, could we keep $75,000 of free cash for future capital dates, we would end up with $87,000 of free cash for capitals. So we achieved that target. And then with the stabilization fund, if we did a drawdown of 67500 could we remain within our 10% of net operating revenues? Could we maintain the, the stabilization fund? Um, at, uh, at least 10% of net operating revenues. So taking the FI17 numbers, which are the last numbers that I have in, uh, available, uh, we would uh, reduce 
free cash uh, stabilization rather by 67,500. That would um, draw the stabilization balance from 13.41% of net operating of revenues to 12.98% of net uh, operating revenues. So we achieved that goal as well. But we would still be above our two million mark. We'd be so above two million mark, and you're actually making a smarter uh, uh, investment because you'd be transferring stabilization uh, to OPEB, which is the same kind of reserve. That's the way that the auditors will look at it. But the OPEB is going to give you a better rate of return over the long term. So you're actually reinvesting that money. Uh, and uh, also protecting it because once it goes into OPEB, it can only be used for OPEB purposes. You can't reallocate that money later on, whereas you can with stabilization. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of other scenarios that I that I looked at. I wanted to split the difference between stabilization uh, between uh, mm -hmm. OPEB and uh, and free cash, but. Every time I went I worked the numbers, we ended up not achieving our goals one way or the other. That there was always a diminished financial condition for the town with these other scenarios. So that's my recommendation. This is one time where I don't mind doing stabilization <laughs> for open. <laughs> I've been a big bugaboo about touching stabilization, but then again, it would be a two-thirds vote. Two, it's going to be Correct. a two-thirds, yeah, mm -hmm. two-thirds vote. To take uh, it from stabilization. Yeah. And we're going to be taking this uh, vote uh, at uh, both the annual town meeting and the fall town meeting, because we'll, <coughs> we'll have certified free cash at the fall town meeting, which we don't have <coughs> right now, or we don't have enough mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. The previous cut contributions to open were higher than sixty-seven thousand dollars. That's correct. Why has it been reduced such? It would it would not be reduced. We would be about funding no two hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars. I would just I was paying all of that out of free cash. So I'm that's what you're short sixty-seven. I'm I'm transferring sixty-seven thousand from stabilization into the 263, and then that frees up some free cash to be spent on recurring uh, items. What's the vote required to take money out of stabilization? Two thirds majority. I thought it was a four fifths. No. Two thirds. Two thirds. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just putting all that 53, 316 for the school. I mean, can we split? There, I mean, they're not the only ones that are over. <coughs> Can we split that up between the school and the ambulance or anything like that for a vote, or is it good to just pack them all into one line item, that whole amount? Um, I think that the difficulty with shorting the ambulance line item would be that, uh, that we might be in a situation where we can't sign contracts yeah. or we can't legally paid contracts that we don't have enough money for that that's an accounting issue that we don't want to run a follow up. Okay. And the other thing we've done in the past, and, and again I'll, my own opinion is in a situation like this, um, obviously free cash is not guaranteed, but we have a pretty good sense now that you know we should have these funds available, but be able to articulate to the schools that Funding the fifty-three thousand would be a priority, um, and I'm, I'm more than happy to to make that statement to the school committee and to mm -hmm. the superintendent. Yeah, and we have we have done that in the past yep. too. Uh, yep. This isn't the first time that we would fund them at fall town meeting either. So, mm -hmm. uh, and so we did honor our commitment to them. So the only other, other open item in the budget, which we can't settle now, is our the union contract negotiations and the financial impact on that so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to defer as little as possible to the uh, fall town meeting because we're going to need some capacity to address those obligations I looked at the uh, I looked at the revenues for the first three quarters of the year 
uh, and uh, when I prepared the FY, when I prepared the February 5th budget, I had only five or six months of revenue projections at that time. <coughs> we were looking at smaller numbers. We were looking at less development in FY19, commercial and residential development, less uh, economic activity. Uh, the three quarter of Three, the three quarters revealed that all of our revenue projections are trending north of where they need to be. Uh, so I th think I'm comfortable adding the 71,000 into the local receipts because we have big money coming into building inspections, hotel, meals, excise, um, some of the other larger. Uh, the other larger departmental returns are coming in. And talking to the assessor this morning, there's a number of um, sources of funds that are very likely that we can't count on because of the complexities of municipal accounting and reporting to the Department of Revenue. But we know that are coming. So the 95 uh, suite hotel, all right, there's all that revenue. <coughs> There's a solar array that's coming online uh, on July 1st, so that's $14,000 right there. Uh, there's host community agreements with marijuana establishments, which are worth a minimum $50,000 each. So can't, can't use it in this budget cycle, but come fall, we should be in a better position than where we are right now. So. So, do you need to have a vote on this? Are we just or, or at least not object? Or what? At least not object. Not object. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I recommend moving no. forward with option two. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Finance, good night. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's, let's, let's get Marlo out here at a decent hour. How about water and sewer rates, Marlo? Uh, yes, uh, we met last week or the week before for the second time to discuss the, the water sewer rate uh, study uh, that we put together with Ty and Bond. Um, we came in the first night uh, and we had a recommendation. Um, the figures were really high per year as far as what we were looking at uh, needing to increase the rates. So I went back to the drawing board with the capital and with Ty and Bond and we moved some things around. Um, and so I came up, we came up with a second recommendation. I think it was two weeks ago. I'm losing my weeks here. Or if it wasn't last week, it was the week before. Um, so at the end of that meeting, I think um, members of the board requested uh, five, five pieces of the information from the model, uh, which I uh, sent down to, to David the next day. Um, we poked around, we looked through some more things, and um, basically the five pages is, is, is where I'm landing um, as far as my recommendation uh, for this year. It's five and 15? Yes. So for tonight, we just acknowledge and receive the, uh, the, the recommendation. We have to go to a formal public hearing next week on this. Okay. okay. And if there's anything that comes up, feel free to reach out and I can give you the information. What have we done with the 6.7% and the 10% so far? Can you, can you give me context on that? What are you talking about? We raised the rates already. Oh, you're looking at the uh, What did FY we do 18? with that money? The money is used to fund the operations of both enterprise funds. And how much have we taken out to offset the general budget? Well, those numbers are right in your budget there. Administrative costs. Yep. Let me bring those up for you. So, FY18, the Water Administration was two hundred. $49,000. Wastewater Administration was $230,485. HPAT was $8,589. Uh, 
for the most part, those are growing down in FY19. So the Water Administration drops nearly $50,000 from, drops $44,000 from 249 down to 205. And sewer drops by 18,000 from 230 down to 212. So I have a question. These are basically chargebacks, is that they are for? Yeah. yeah so, so the principle is, is that the enterprise fund should be totally self-supporting. There should be no hidden taxpayer support for this. So it pays for all the hidden costs associated with benefits and benefit administration and other kinds of uh, administrative oversight, collections, etc. I just think if we're going to go and ask for a, a raise, that those funds need to go to the water sewer department rather than be raided for other purposes in town or chargebacks, you know, for other other exactly. departments because we need to fund these repairs and the, the capital improvements. So I think. Well, you know, and like I said, in the past, for the past 35 years I've been there, when we had a failure, we went to. Uh, it went through capital through debt exclusion and it was paid for and it was fixed that way it doesn't it won't keep compounding like we do with these rates these rates are never going to go down and my bill was quite high and I you must have received the emails from some people on fixed incomes already on how this 6.7% and 10% has affected them and I've been saying it right along, and I'm saying it again. So you've been saying it all along, and you were disappointed that the prior years the board didn't move to increase rates. So uh, are I, you arguing I, against yourself, or are you no, arguing for? I made a statement of a half a percent or one percent five years ago, and no, but, nothing was done. But we can't we can't unring the bell. So what I'm asking is now it sounds like you're making an argument that we shouldn't, or are you just oh, no, no, you're no, just no. complaining I, about the way it all evolved? Yes. Okay. Exactly. I agree. We should have raised rates and wow. we did, but now we have to do something. Admitting to guilt, I love it. <laughs> I didn't say it's guilty. About it, no. Yes, you were. Yeah. 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 So again, you know, I, I think we've had a discussion. I, I'm absolutely not for now. that that type of increase right now at this point. I mean, after we just raised them, and like I said, for the emergencies that we do have coming up. We're going to have to do something on an emergency basis, but John, on a debt exclusion. If we don't raise them now, the 5 and the 15, aren't we just going to put ourselves in exactly the situation that you don't? We don't know. Is there any way to assure people that that money will remain in the water and sewer department rather than be charged back to other departments or used for the general budget purposes? Is there any way to? Well, well by the virtue of the fact that those chargebacks are going down, yeah. Uh, right, it's getting better, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So the charge, the chargebacks. Every every year, I have Mr. Dukevitz comes into my office and says, "Is my tax dollars paying anything for the sewer?" And the administrative chargebacks ensure that I can say, "No, Mr. Dukevitz, it's a self-sustaining uh, enterprise fund independent of the tax base." Um, so that's the reason why those administrative charges are there and, and yes they are going down and that's a good thing right. um, my budget problems would be solved if I just level funded them but I'm not going to do that I'm going to go by the formulas that are built within the administrative charge bank mm -hmm. so is the money going to stay within the within the enterprise fund yeah it's going to pay for things that the enterprise fund needs to pay for do your fiscal year 18 numbers on this chart reflect the increase in rates? Last year? Yeah. Yes, they do. I, I think uh, we go back and, and we, if we want to give, a, I can give you a little history on that. I believe that's what kind of triggered, well, DEP wanted out of their sanitary survey, wanted a water study, but I think what triggered the sewer part of it was, I, I think I stated back then looking at the numbers that that 10% is only going to slow down that graph from, from diving, um, slow down that pace. And the, on this, I'm sorry, we don't have it here so everybody can see it, but the blue bars, it, that's the cost, and the yellow dots are the revenue? 
that how it is? Uh, the well, the yellow the right yellow's right? retained earnings target. What they call retained earnings target. Okay. So it just looks flat, even though the rates went up. But I know 2017 was a well. I guess that would have, yeah fiscal year 2017 would have been a drought year versus a non-drought year. So I don't know if there was more water consumption. Right. That that's why that line is flat. Right. And and sewer it, sewer really jumped for for well one reason when Montague uh, closed their their plant for accepting sludge. Our sludge jumped. I think it was. Uh, Estimated to jump 80,000 a year to haul the lowell. We ended up getting a pretty good deal with lowell, but still very expensive. So I backed that out of the budget, this past budget. Um, but we're still looking at $162,000 a year to haul our sludge. Um, Until some, a better plan comes up. I've been in numerous meetings for Greenfield's anaerobic digester. That's an opportunity. There's, there's word that Springfield may get one going. Um, you know, a lot of that money's hauling costs you know, all the way to lowell. So, um, you know, and other expenses go up. From, it's from roughly five thousand dollars a month just for trucking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I signed a twenty thousand dollar bill yesterday. What I hear here between the water and the sewer, the charge backs are four hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand for one, two hundred thousand for that. Yep. That to me is totally insane. I argued that when I was sewer commission, the DPW could hire the staff to do everything, the billing, everything and hand the check to the town for not even a quarter of what that $200,000. That, what it looks to me, that's all they're doing here is robbing Peter to pay Paul. I argued with it before, it was unjust before, and now it's totally out of hand. I, I, I just can't believe it. $400,000, can you think how much it would cost you for personnel to process bills, to collect bills, and do that. That's administration? You gotta be kidding me. Well, I mean, and it also includes health insurance uh, and other benefits for the employees. So those benefits are not paid for through the water and sewer department. So this is all spelled out in excruciating detail in the budget book. Uh, there is a formula there that I'm uh, happy to walk you through it. Uh, it's been reviewed by the Department of Revenue. They had no no problem with it. Can I get a copy of that? Absolutely. It's in the budget book. I'd like to see that. I'm it's going to email it to you right you now. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. All right, so what do we need to do? Um, what? So I'll make a recommendation. Well, that we, we're really just acknowledging this. We're done. Yeah. So we don't I mean, really have the public. In, in order to vote on rates, you have to have a public hearing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Next week. This was my final recommendation. Yeah. And I, I do want to add that. From the first meeting we had, I mean, we were sitting with 40% of the top of sewer. It took a lot of work to move things around. Um, so we can continue our services and, and, and get some capital in. Um, so we, we backed that down to 15, but you know, I, I just want to say that that's going to be hitting rock bottom at 19 and covering our operational costs, our budget, our regular budget. And then it's going to start rebounding after that. So, I mean, it's an important thing to know. You know, and not even before when I was on a board over the last 30 years, Joyce, and you know it, we've been back and forth about capital mm -hmm. through taxation for repairs to the sewer. Mm -hmm. and, and without the malls and the industrial area, the rest of the town was going to pay more. It, it really needs to be discussed again for major infrastructure repairs for water and sewer to come out of capital through taxation. And at least you're accounting for that money. So when, when, shouldn't that be really pushed by the Capital Planning Committee and, and the Council of the Financial Management yeah, Team? Yeah, so there's two, two things. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you've, got a, uh, you've, got a, a debt, you've got a number of debt policies, one of which is that if you have a special revenue, for, that's a special revenue uh, uh, project that should be paid for, the debt service should be paid for through the special revenue. Mm -hmm. So that's a fancy way of saying if it's a water project, water rates should pay for it. Um, so you can amend your policy if you wish. Well, we did it with the two pump stations. That's through the sewer rates. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But you didn't do it with the water treatment plant. Yeah. You split it 50-50 or 60-60. Yeah. Exactly. That worked out. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, and, and not to be repetitive, but we have 964 users for sewer, as opposed to 2,000 and something for water. So, you know, you got a lot of, you know, not to be repetitive, we have a lot of infrastructure and it's aged. Um, There's a lot of loose ends in the last 10 years since the DPW has been implemented. And the, the departments in both of them, although we got two uh, enterprise funds, the departments are split a third, a third, a third. And and nobody knew the real numbers, you know. It's the same thing we're going to run into with the fire department and the ambulance service. You know, in the last 10 years, you spent over a million dollars on DPW that still got a lot of loose ends that need to be straightened out. Maybe the department is working on those. No, mm -hmm. no, absolutely is. But yeah. It's been 10 years, it's been a slow process. Mm -hmm. it as, as a lot of things have been slow, you know, you know it just when money hasn't been there, you haven't been able to do it. And it's still not there. And it's still <laughs> not there, so I mean, yeah. you know, you can only do so much when there's one yeah. pot to I pick mean, from, you know? 10 years, construction costs have gone up 30%, so it's hard to compare, John. All right, so let's set, what time will we have a uh, public hearing next week? What time is that going to be posted? Uh, let's bring that up. The public hearing at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. And for the public, all this is on board docs. And can we put it on TV5 maybe? And they can go back on YouTube yeah. and yeah. see it. Because uh, with the, the amount of complaints, the the amount of complaints I've had already with the second second billing cycle now? Or the fourth? Fourth billing cycle. Yeah, well, I think you're right, though, the second with the new yeah, rates. Yeah, second with the new rates. Yeah. Um, and the complaints are starting to come in. So. All right. May 2nd, 8 p.m. May 2nd. Public hearing on sewer and water rates. Okay. Um, Does Rob have anything to do with that sign? I'm sorry? Does Marlo have anything to do yes. with that sign? Back you care sign. And Right away. No, he doesn't. Uh, no. But he does have a. I was going to bring it up in my town administrator's report. We might as well talk about it. Uh, the uh, the emergency sewer repair. Oh, uh, wait a minute. That box is right on top of the water and sewer line. I haven't seen anything on it um, as far as prints or anything like that. Sure. I mean, I caught it in the agenda, but I didn't didn't realize it was something. It no, uh, it doesn't go to the planning board. It was, it's a request to put a, a commercial sign in the town right of way. Uh, I would normally handle this, but the board has asked me not to do that, to bring it to you. I can make my recommendation right now, just yes. with the not. I was going to ask, too, about that historical commission, because that's a historical zone there so as well. So. My recommendation would be no. Yeah, it's right over the water, sir. 12-inch water line and 12-inch. I'm trying to see where is it. Right that first. That first one. Right at the first entrance there where, uh, oh, sign. where Dunkin' Donuts oh, okay. entrance is on okay. Middle Street. Yeah. So it's on the Middle Street. There. Oh, right. Middle Street. It's right out here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're at Dunkin' Donuts pulling off of Middle Street. It'd be right here. Want to take a look at it? No, I, I know what you're talking about. There's Real close to our van wall. So that, so you know, it's on it's yeah. on her lawn yeah. up there, but it's yeah, the manhole's right on the corner there, right. on the curb. Would it be a section of view to it? Uh, it looks like it's set back, but it's not set back far far enough. If if they were to put it on town property up by the sidewalk, maybe you know, it wouldn't be over the water and sewer line. Yeah. I think I think they're opening up the door. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think that you've got one of the prettiest streets in all of New England right there. Uh, you could easily lose that. Uh, and would, would the historical care. society have to chime in on that? Probably and everybody's and got to the planning look at board it first, and, yeah. You know, before you put up a sign anywhere? Yeah. Did Dunkin' Donuts get approval to put that sign there? Thank you. They did, okay. Orange? Just looking at where their sign is and we're yeah. arguing against okay. the Mountain Care yeah. one, so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, the only thing I would comment on, just like poles, water and sewer infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, I guess the rest is up to the board. Thank you. Or line of sight. So we have to entertain a motion for that vacuum care, or what do you want to do? Have it 
What do you want? Are you looking for a motion? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we deny the request to place the uh, back of care sign in the town right of way. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want to do an update on Russell School, anything with the contractors? Oh, yeah, they, um, well, we saw the emails. Uh, they got right up there and, and cleaned things up. I think weather held them up a little bit. Otherwise, they'd be, they would have left town by now. I think they're pouring the second foundation. I didn't get out there today, either today or tomorrow, but um, the signboards were supposed to be removed by the end of the week, gone. Um, so I also showed up on the property and uh, talking to them about fixing up a little bit of blacktop over there, which was, was damaged, but to begin with, and they're going to go and seed the, the grass, and um, so that's where we're at on that, before they go. Okay. Um, oh, and, a, and a, a pile of loam that was left at the back of the, the existing town lot is going to be removed also, if it hasn't been already. I didn't get up there today. Thank you. Not yet. 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 Thank you, yes. That's for us. Yeah. That's for us. Thanks, David. Yeah, there you go. It's a pretty easy repair. Okay. Yeah. Emergency repairs for the uh, sewer. Your name. Oh. Marla, why don't you walk us through this? Okay, so. Um, yeah. Yeah. To put it in the uh, town administrator's report. This is a developing issue. Yes. It's an emergency developing issue. Yeah, it's well, it is developed. <laughs> um, so just to back the bus up a little bit, uh, we went to a stakeholders meeting early last week or the week before. The sidewalk project, Mass DOT sidewalk project, starting at South Maple, headed for the Amherst line, was supposed to commence this week. Um, so I started with uh, assessing our sewers uh, going forward for 2022 or 23. For the larger project, so we were able to uh, uh, tee clean in camera 2,000 feet of AC main of, of three or four different sizes. Um, I take that back, 1,800 up in that area and, and two, about 240 feet in the E Street intersection. Um, the video, I got the video that afternoon. They were nice enough to cut it onto a thumb drive for me, and uh, it was pretty scary when I watched it. Uh, movies at home that night. Um, the, 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 all the pipe work is paper thin. There's gaskets showing through it. Uh, it was installed in 1964. It's got a 50-year life, life cycle. Um, so it, it was before I asked the recommendation from the, the filming company, I, the videotaping company, I actually came to the conclusion that it looked pretty good to line, but it don't look good. It's looking, looking like the pipes can, can start collapsing in, in the near future. I mean, tomorrow, six months from now, I don't know. The 12 inch good field. Yeah, I mean, there's gaskets showing on the inside of the pipe that are supposed to be on the outside of the pipe to, 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 to join the pipe together. So, um, so that came back with a recommendation that uh, yes, you can line these, but you uh, it came back as ASAP in the report. Um, so I immediately I, I contacted David uh, and said that we, we really should line these in an emergency um, because they are starting the sidewalk project. They're going to have heavy equipment up there, heavy vibratory equipment. Um, and the last thing we want is a collapse out there in that intersection, you know, like on graduation weekend or something. So um, I, can't, I, I can't, came tonight because I, I highly recommend that uh, an emergency basis for emergency procurement also that uh, we go ahead and get this 2,000 feet lined as soon as we can. Uh, I did. I did get out ahead of it. I've got two quotes already. Um, I was also going to request that for the emergency procurement that we that we can apply for a waiver for that. Uh, but they're going to want at least three quotes, so I got out ahead of that. I'm waiting for the third one. Um, I did put in my email. Um, I'm estimating uh, just about seventy-six thousand dollars for that work. Um, we should have a retainage in there. I'm requesting eighty-five thousand, um, just in case we come across something else along the way. Um, I don't know if any of you remember the McDonald's cabin, but yeah. that's what you're looking at right now. Yeah. And we also are down that one truck too. So if there was an emergency, yeah. Well, we have the vector. You have the vector. Um, but we, it would be calling calling everyone at that point. If, if we, I mean that that section of Maine takes the hotels the mall, 
I mean, it takes everything off that end of town. I mean, system, yeah, system McDonald's failure, you know, we pumped it with our truck and a uh, contractor's truck, but you know, there's been three more motels built down there. There's, there's, a, lot of stress. there's a lot more, there's a lot more water coming through that line than there used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually had a much higher number that I ran up, but <clears throat> I looked up some of John's old numbers on, on previous projects and I ran with those numbers, but believe it or not, something's gone down in price a little bit because there's more companies doing it now, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing, but. Um, and, and they estimated the, originally when we sleeve lined back, I don't know how many years ago that uh, station two was done, but it was roughly a 50 year warranty and it's pretty much a 100 year warranty right now yeah. on, on the lining, so. Yeah. They, they, were, they were rating it up to 50 years, now they're saying 50 to 100, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. 50 now, so. And what's your estimated cost if there was a collapse and we had to take up that intersection? Conservatively, $750,000. Conservatively, if you got to do manholes still here. <clears throat> that doesn't include all the inconvenience of rerouting traffic and... Um, it's basically a lane on Route 9, closing south Maple, Maple Street completely. Intersection. For extended major, time. It's yeah. a major, major failure there. Yeah. And the, and work, if, if we do the work, the work would be done at night so we don't have to, we don't have to worry about bypass pumping, lower flows. Uh, that, that price is given that, that we're going to have a couple of the sewer, our own sewer uh, workers helping out controlling the pump station, uh, hauling septage, we're going to wreck, wreck a couple, couple of trucks. Uh, like what you were saying, that one truck could be used but it can't be used. Um, but uh, they're saying, uh, I'm, I'm being told two to three nights at this point to get it all done. Uh, and at night would probably be best. So we're going to do daily prayer right now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been praying since last Thursday night. I didn't sleep. <laughs> I should have let it handle for you. <laughs> and, and look, look, I'm not an eager uh, person, but it was pretty ugly. Mm. Um, I, I was amazed at how circular the pipe, the pipes still look for the condition they're in. In fact, a couple of both companies had already said to me that it's pretty amazing they're still bound like they are. So, I certainly would advise the DPW and this select board, sewer commissioners. You think that's the oldest line? These lines started here. These are older. So when you got rubbers showing the inside of those pipes, that's the same thing happened in Lorano. You spent a quarter of a million dollars. You could spend thirty thousand dollars to line it. We line pipes before, and it's done at midnight. But you have a break. You're going to get. This is what we all had set up to bypass. You put a line above, dump it the manhole, bypass the whole system, and that's expensive. And again, as best this pipe can't be crushed no more. It has to be abated and taken off. Mega bucks. So. If he says it's going to be seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, that is a very conservative figure. That thing would be closer to one million dollars. Yes. And yeah. if that's bad, guess what this older pipe is. So I would advise you guys. Been after you for a few years now. Recamera. We did the whole thing from Amherst all the way down. You can compare those two films. He's got those, and you see how they deteriorated. That tells you. The rest of the system's in trouble. We're, we're in the we're in the process. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept the recommendation of declare DP, an emergency. Yeah. The, the DPW director to declare an emergency <laughs> and move forward with the necessary repairs for the section of infrastructure under discussion. Second for comment. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Don't you, the Madam Chairman? Don't you think? The DPW can't declare emergency. The sewer commissioners, and you as acting sewer commissioners, got to declare that emergency. We just did. We just did. Right. So well, I thought the I heard you said the DPW. No, no, we did. Okay, we accepted good. the recommendation. And okay. Good. Do we need a vote for an emergency procurement? No, no. Waiver? Okay. I just was just making sure we got all of it. We're all federation in the basket. So Marlowe, I'll contact the Department of Revenue and DCAM. Basically. And we got to talk how we fund it. Yep. Okay. All right, David. Anything else on your roadshow? <laughs> Which David? 
speech issues I saw with not being able to talk to residents of Hadley as far as what our feelings were on issues outside of a select board meeting or tell people how we felt which would make campaigning or election almost impossible based on uh, the, the wording that was in that document. So what I did was I uh, made some changes to the document that you have there and, um, and there's two versions. One is the changed document and then there's another one with uh, my notes and the track changes so you can see what was deleted and what wasn't. Just while you're sitting there, I couldn't find, and thank you for doing that, because it's a lot easier to follow where so you said I took this out. Right. But the one about not, um, I, I remember that there was language, and, I, and I'm sorry, I should have gone back to the original, but the, the, there was language in there that discouraged people from communicating an uninformed opinion. You know, like to say, right. oh, I'm against this or I'm for that when we haven't even had a chance to talk about it yet. But I couldn't, I, I couldn't see what was deleted in your. Yeah, I left. So I left the part about, uh, you know, select board members should be fully informed somewhere. That's mentioned in there, and I, I did leave that in there. Right. Uh, what I took out was the fact that. Let me see here. Find the right version. You took out, give the town administrator full responsibility for discharging his or her decisions and solutions. Right, but that's that's different that's from one. what we're yeah. talking about. That, that's not the section. It's, it's not, under duties, not make statements. duties, obligations, and responsibility of board members, I believe. Um, okay, I'd so like I, a little bit more time to take a look at this anyway, so maybe after town meeting we can leave this on the agenda. Yeah. What, what I left in was discuss be, it a little bit more. Was be well informed. You know about the duties and the issues. Yeah. Um, let's see. Remember that he should represents the entire community right. at all times. All that I left in there. Uh, yeah. yeah. The part that I took out, which it doesn't seem to be showing the track changes, was the part that we couldn't. It's further down. Yeah, that's why I didn't remember. Yeah. Wrecking. Oh, uh, I see. Not, not make statements not make or statements. promises. Right, right, right. right. We're outside of a select board meeting where we couldn't talk to. Uh, resident of Hadley and tell them how, how we felt on an issue. Okay, can, and so can I click, because I think, like I, I get where you're going with a lot of these, and again, I, I had just separately kind of given you the background and, on how we came to it. Yep. On that one in particular, I think the concern, and it's a question of whether it stays in here or maybe it's, it, maybe some of these things can be reworded as opposed to deleted too. Um, I think the concern is that, um, for the sake of argument, um, Marlow has the water and sewer rates on. And somebody stops me on the street, and I say, I'll tell you right now, there's no way I'm ever voting for a water and sewer rate increase. I think the concern was that kind of thing could be 
I'm just picking that one up. I'm sure there are more. That, hey, that's me too. That, that could be. I was going to say, it sounds like John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's wrong with uh, that? No, I, I, I'm Where, not dead against not raising the rates because you're still no, stuck because you that. wanted to raise the rates i did I yes did. But not <laughs> i'm sorry i was just i'm, I'm, was, I'm just coming up with a fictional example of something that well, i'll buy, each year I'll buy the bowl for you some popcorn and we'll sit down and watch the movie of what i said okay yeah, yeah. i i think the concern was making sure that before people spoke with conviction and authority that we were encouraging people to make sure that they so uh, so maybe to your point, David, it, it came across maybe like an edict, like thou shalt not. Right. Which of course we're all human beings; we have a right to express our opinion. And under um, Mass General Law, the so board maybe has certain obligations yeah. on the state level. To okay. But maybe it's something along the lines of you know all members of the board are encouraged to be fully informed prior to, you know, that kind of thing. And you and I think maybe you're saying we get to that in another bullet. Yeah. Uh, well, there's be well informed concerning the duties of a select board member, and then. Um, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I just I just felt the wording was a little strong and kind of uh, restricting our ability to communicate with voters. And right. Yeah, because, and that's not the. Intent. I mean, if we supported the say the library, we couldn't. Based on that original language, we couldn't say that outside of a select board meeting. Right. So. But that's not that's not the intent. We right. certainly have right. a right to. Right. It, it just make you, making sure it's informed as opposed to right. yep. you know, yeah. shooting from the hip and not knowing what you're talking about. And then we all look yeah. that. So do we want to put this off? And I'd still like to take it. a little bit more time after Tom Eaton or something. Have, yeah, have, that's have fine. a little more time in a meeting to discuss it. Sure. Yeah, but I'm certainly <laughs> open minded to cleaning it up. I, oh, I yeah. agree. I think there's some things when I, you know, I. I know what it meant, right. and then I read your comment, and I'm like, what? And then I'm like, oh, oh that's kind of what it says. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. Anything so, yeah. can always change us. Change lot, us always a lot of so. this stuff is already in the personnel book, in the personnel handbook, mm -hmm. so. In the yellow book there. Yeah. So. Well, and again, this was a recommendation that came down from the, the state on right. best practices, so. That's where it came from originally. Yeah. Okay, so we'll table so we'll put it, it on for another, another discussion. Because we don't want to go anywhere for a year, so we're here. Yeah, we're here. Okay. All right. Anything else on your town report, David, that you wanted to mention tonight? The audit is substantially complete, so we'll be scheduling a, uh, a uh, verbal report from the auditors on the FY17 budget and financing condition. Uh, we've already dealt with the flap grant. We've already dealt with the emergency repairs. The Turk of Park, we will all awarded that to a master of landscaping, so the uh, contracts have been sent out. Town meeting is coming right up, folks. There's public forum tomorrow at uh, 7 o'clock, Hopkins Academy. And uh, <coughs> town meeting itself is May 3rd at 7 o'clock at Hopkins Academy. But don't forget the Mother's Club Recycling Day, April 28th. Good, good event. This Saturday, 8 till 1 o'clock, Mother's Club Recycling Day at nine. Adley Elementary School. 9 to 1. I mean, 9 to noon. 9, nine to a, noon now? They changed the time? That, uh, this is the flyer that came out. It was 8 to 1. Yeah. What's that? What is that? It's the Hadley Mother's Club. No, it's the Hadley Band, Band Boosters. Band Boosters. Bottle, bottle Drive. Can no, drive. that's the Bottle Drive. Okay. That's along. That's, that's in with conjunction the with the Mother's Club. Recycle day. Got it. So okay. recycle day means anything you want to. And the boys uh, they there. take anything a, or not. Get a hold of the mothers club. Yeah. Okay. It's online, and yeah. So what is that? The uh, uh, boosters. So, yep. Yeah, so bottle. Uh, bottle drive is nine, nine to, to twelve. Noon. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And the drop that's at Hadley Elementary School. And that's in Hadley, Hadley Elementary School also. Yep. Yeah. So other than that, I've been up to town meeting all the time at this point. Uh, I read that in the paper. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going now. Yeah. See you. Bye. Ten seconds. Quick update on the mission, oh, mission electrical upgrade. Um, I just got information on the way here tonight. I was on the phone with Mike. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, we're looking good. Um, the, the missions should be completed and installed by early next week. Uh, that part of the work, there's still some electrical that needs to be done, but that project looks to be ahead of target. So good. we should be done with the compact grant part of it within the next week. And um, so you have all your invoices to, to go ahead and file and pay for it. Just a reminder that we have Gabriel Owen to thank for writing the part of that grant. So <laughs> save, save people $50,000. Thank you, Gabriel. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, actually, the first uh, upgrade will probably be complete next week also. Yeah. Did Marlo talk to the contractor that wrecked those parking lots over there in the upper and the lower in the Legion to fix um, those? Did anybody talk to that contractor? Christian was. No. This, is that the same contractor that's working here now? Yes. That stage there? Yes. Did anybody talk to him about it? Joe? No. Is anybody going to? What are you talking about, Sean? To repair the parking lots that he, uh, he wrecked. The upper parking lot, the town lot up in the region. Right. So I think we need to settle a couple of things in clerk on that one first. Mm -hmm. I just had a quick update um, on the senior center. Mm -hmm. um, they got their budget numbers in, and they're on track right now. They're less than 2% over the cost estimate. So that's really good. Um, there's two planning board meetings coming up for the senior center, one on May 15th and one on June 9th. And they're asking if they can maybe hold those meetings at Hopkins instead of over at the senior center, or yeah, the senior center. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, how that request goes through. It would have to be the planning board that addresses us mm -hmm. on that if they want to move their venue. Okay. And because they need of to their, reserve room at the And they need to together. reserve Because they're just worried that because of the importance of those meetings, there could be too many people showing up. Yeah, and it could be could be canceled because of that so and then delay the project yes. more. So we should ask the planning board if you could contact, contact. the chair. Okay. Yeah, I'll reach out to them. You want to reach out to them? Okay. Who are you going to talk to? <laughs> it's the chair who sets the agenda, so I'll give Mr. Maximowski. No, we'll be up to the board, the home board. Mm. Well, we still have to address, contact the chair yeah. and ask him, yeah. and then he can bring it up to his board. Yeah. Mm. There you go. Well, the chair sets the agenda, so right. however the chair wants to set the agenda. Then I don't think the right. board votes on the venue, because we've never done that here. We just <coughs> make a decision and roll with it. Okay. So you, you'll do that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Crystal? That's it. That I had a, that. Okay. Anything else from everybody else? Any announcements tonight? <coughs> no, we don't need to go into executive session this evening. Oh, no, we don't? We don't. Uh, no, don't if nobody has any other announcements, I'll entertain a motion. Sorry. Second. Yeah. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you.